Hi, I'm Jen Rogers at NASDAQ Market Site, and this is Breakthrough Economy. Today, we explore the convergence of biotech, mental health, and neurological disorders, examining key innovations and exploring how the space is being transformed by new advancements and technologies. I'm joined by Andrew Miller, co-founder and COO at Karuna Therapeutics, and Paul Matisse, co-head of the biotech research team at Stiefel. So Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. I, I want to just get started with really the scope and the scale of the issue you are trying to solve for. And according to the World Health Organization, one in every four people around the world will be affected by a mental or neurological disorder at some point in their lives. That is a huge portion of the population, but many treatments in these cases are just stuck in the last century. How? Are biotech breakthroughs finally transforming how we treat mental health and neurological disorders in the last five years? Mental illness is a huge issue from a societal perspective in the U.S. as well as worldwide, and, and frankly, something that we're really not speaking about enough. Um, when you speak to the idea of breakthroughs coming from the biotechnology industry, you know, unfortunately, over the last 10 to 20 years, there isn't a lot to talk about. In mental illness um, and the treatment of mental illness. We talk a lot about gene therapy and immuno-oncology, um, oligonucleotide therapeutics, and some of these technologies that have really revolutionized medicine in many areas, unfortunately haven't had a lot of utility at this point in the treatment of mental illness. We are really, uh, to use your words, kind of stuck in the last century. Um, I think there's a huge need, uh, a huge opportunity to have an impact on human health. If we can really break out of um, the treatment paradigms that exist right now. And that's really what we're focused on at Corona. I would say one thing that has changed is really the heightened focus on mental health right now. More people are speaking about it. More people are you know, looking towards how do we solve for this? So how has that changed biotech in terms of treatments that are possible, if at all? Like, it Has the conversation that's going on in the public affected the conversation that's happening in the biotech community? I do think it's been a benefit. It's one of the silver linings, I think, of the pandemic is the conversation that's much more public about mental illness. Obviously, most of that is focused on anxiety and depression and some of the more um, common um, and well-known disorders, less about things like schizophrenia and, and psychosis, which is really what we're focused on at Corona. But I think anything that can really elevate the conversation that's happening about mental illness and bring attention to the magnitude of human health concern around mental illness, I think it's a positive from a societal perspective. I think also from a biotechnology industry perspective, this is an area where many of the largest pharmaceutical companies have historically um, been developing and, and marketing medicines, um, but many of them have chosen to really discontinue their efforts in, in developing new treatments for mental health. I think that's really where the biotech industry, um, you know, including us at Karuna, is really trying to step up and fill that gap of activity um, with the idea of how do we develop that next generation of treatments. So let's dive into Karuna's approach here. How is your company thinking about and developing treatments for neurological and psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia and also psychosis in Alzheimer's patients? Yeah, when we think about schizophrenia and you know the symptoms of psychosis more broadly across um, indications like Alzheimer's disease, um, you know I, I think we're really looking to break out of the historical treatment paradigm, which is really a hundred percent focused on um, dopamine and serotonin uh, based treatments, going all the way back to the initial discovery of the first uh, medicine to treat schizophrenia back in the 1950s. Everything we have today really is an incremental. Um, evolution of that. I think what we're focused on at Karuna is really going outside of that, um, looking at acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter system where we believe there's a therapeutic potential to modulate not just symptoms of psychosis, but also potentially cognition and, and mood symptoms associated with schizophrenia as well. And when you think about how we treat these complex um, diseases, whether it's neurological or psychiatric or you know things like oncology and cancer indications, we typically have a number of different ways that we do that. Right now in schizophrenia, we have one. Um, and I think we have the opportunity to introduce really the first new class of medicine. And let's talk about the advancement of CAR-XT therapy. That is your lead candidate in the pipeline right now that you're discussing. I'm curious about the implications it could have on the broader biotech industry. I mean, you talk about this sort of incremental evolution. Is this more of a revolution? Yeah, that's certainly how I would describe it. And I, I think when you speak to broader industry impact, I hope what happens 
um, is that more people are talking and thinking about mental illness and diseases like schizophrenia. Uh, I think fundamentally, the industry, like anything, tends to follow trends. Uh, the last 10 to 15 years, the trend has been away from developing treatments for mental illness. I think we hope to be at the forefront of demonstrating that there's a huge need here. There's an opportunity from an industry perspective to meet that need. Um, and if we can really invigorate the conversation about that and be an example of success, I hope that others uh, will follow in that and continue to increase their efforts in developing new treatments for mental illness. I mean, the numbers are pretty staggering. The World Health Organization estimates that the rise of mental health disorders will cost the global economy $16 trillion by 2030. I mean, it's a really staggering figure. And obviously that doesn't even include the personal toll on individuals and, and families that are impacted by this. So where do you think the biggest opportunities are for biotech advancements when you look out at the mental health and neurological disorder space in the coming years? Certainly, obviously, our focus um, initially on psychosis um, in schizophrenia, as well as in uh, various forms of dementia, like Alzheimer's disease, um, that's certainly where there's an opportunity for a huge improvement. Um, but I think more broadly, um, I don't think that the standard of care in really any area of mental illness is sufficient. It's really not something that we should be satisfied with from a patient perspective, a caregiver perspective, from a societal perspective. So I think there are numerous opportunities. I think it's really about understanding how to capitalize on some of the most recent discoveries um, and, and innovations and how we can apply those to the treatment of mental illness, something that we really haven't done, um, I think, from an industry perspective yet. Karuna Zander Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to get a chance to talk with you about this really important issue. As we just learned from Karuna's co-founder, the demand for new treatments and advances for neurological and behavioral disorders is immense and growing. Paul Matisse is co-head of the biotech research team at Stiefel, and he joins us now to help investors make sense of the landscape and trends in the space. So Paul, how would you describe the current state of biotech investing for mental health and neurological disorders? I think when you're an investor and you're looking at neurology, you kind of need to break it down into mid to late stage versus early stage. The unique thing about neuroscience is on the early stage side, it's a really, really tough area for investors to get comfortable with, right? Because the, to put it simply, right, there's so much we don't understand about the brain. It's really, really hard to, to actually characterize these drugs in animal studies or based on biological mechanism of action. So it's a space where when I talk to a lot of investors and something is in phase one, if that's an oncology drug, if that's a rare disease drug, people might actually be willing to get excited in neuro. There's usually a lot of kind of caution based on just, hey, this, this should work, right? But once you get into phase two data, I think in neuro, it can be even more value creating than other biotech therapeutic areas for a few reasons. One, as the Karuna team said, I mean, this is an area of massive, massive uh, unmet need, right? Be it depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, these are diseases of the broader population. The second thing is when you think about schizophrenia and depression, you know, these are areas, right, where despite there being so many different cheap generic drugs, there's still millions of people with these conditions that don't respond to the standard of care. So when you're thinking about this as a biotech investor, right? You're thinking about drugs that have blockbuster potential, that don't have to rely on a high price, that are probably not going to be regulated all that significantly by insurers, because the reality is if you're Corona or you're another company in this space, the day you launch your drug, there's going to be a big population of people who've already tried everything. So I think for investors, you know, phase two, phase three neurology is a super hot space because there's a lot of opportunity. And then these companies are also, I think, uniquely well positioned to thrive, even as some of those macro threats to kind of biotech and drug pricing continue to be in the backdrop of stock picking in this area. It's a hot space. There's been an increasing amount of capital really put to work uh, just in the last few years here. But what would you say are the biggest challenges that investors are seeing in neuro and mental health right now. I mean, you talk about the, the early versus late and figuring that all out, but as money has been coming in and also uh, a lot of attention here, what are the challenges? I think companies like Karuna and a lot of the companies in the current generation of this space, when they talk to investors, they're very, very focused on trial design and actually mitigating risk, right? I think honestly, that's like the biggest problem, right? Is as an investor in this space, you can be 100% convinced that a drug works, 
but you still have to be convinced that the trial is going to work and the company is not going to get unlucky. This is still an area, I think, where it's not just about getting the drug right. It's also about getting the trial right. And as an analyst or an investor, that can be really hard to diligence. I mean, for investors, though, looking out at the landscape, I mean, you can just see the aging population that's out there if you want to talk about Alzheimer's. I mean, the CDC estimates we could have 14 million people in this country with Alzheimer's by 2060. So when you're looking at the pipeline and the next generation of treatments and investment opportunities, and let's talk about Alzheimer's specifically, where do you think the biggest investing opportunities are? What I'm most focused in in the neurodegeneration space is kind of this broader scientific wave towards genetics. And this is what has become so interesting in neurology is it's really unlikely that something like Alzheimer's is one single disease, right? It's very heterogeneous. I mean, you can progress quickly in three to four years, or you can take 10 to 20 years, right? And so with greater utilization of genetics, there's a greater number of targets now in neurodegeneration that are being informed by risk factors that maybe aren't causative for disease, but can lead to a significantly higher risk. It's still early days for this space. And I think the tough thing with neuro is just because you have a genetic target doesn't mean you fully understand exactly how it works. But to me, that's where I think we're going to start to get bigger breakthroughs. Just stepping back a, a little bit to, to wrap up and looking at the entire space here, and it's exciting hearing you talk about all of the potential advances that are out there. And I think anybody who has somebody in their life and has been touched by this, uh, it's you know doubly exciting for them. What's the timeline though for investors? Like what do people need to think about when they are putting money to work here? The one thing I worry about a little bit as an analyst where neuro is one of my main areas of focus and it's super hot right now is we're going to have a few big high profile failures again, right? And I, and I would caution people to not not overreact to a big win and to not overreact and, you know, throw out all the other programs because we have another high profile failures, right? I mean, we've seen the excitement for this space ebb and flow a lot. Um, and so I do think that that would be my point of caution. I think on the point of optimism, like I said before, I mean, I think neuro is one of the unique areas in biotech where there's very little investor debate, and rightfully so, around the size of these markets and the opportunity for a lot of these new drugs. And I think it's an area where we could start to see more strategic interest among larger companies, right? I mean, we do have a number of big biotechs and big pharma companies who have a few scattered neuro programs here or there. And I think ultimately, kind of as you said, right, this is a disease of an aging population. Mental health is an epidemic now in the 2020s. I think thematically speaking, this is going to be a space that big biotech and big pharma will want to participate in. So, I mean, as you can see, I'm excited about the whole area, even if I also do also focus on why a lot of things fail uh, more often than they work in this space. Well, thanks so much for getting us excited as well. Uh, Paul Matisse with Stiefel. And of course, we talked to Andrew Miller from Karuna earlier. Really enjoyed talking with you. This is Breakthrough Economy.